Welcome to Electron Line, and now we're going to take another look at how they determined the accuracy of the Hubble constant. Remember, Hubble was way off, probably by a factor of seven or eight, where he thought that the Hubble constant was in the 500 range, 500, 550 kilometers per second per mega per sec, which we now know today is completely wrong, of course. But the concept was there that there was this re linear relationship between the recessional velocities of galaxies and the distance from, uh, to those galaxies. So, if the galaxy was twice as far away, it was moving twice as fast, three times as far away, it was moving three times as fast. But how do we find an independent way of measuring the distance to those galaxies? Well, back in 1977, Thule Fisher, or Brent Thule and Richard Fisher, came up with this ingenious concept where they had studied the spin-flip radiation coming from galaxies. Now, what does a spin-flip mean? Well, it turns out that electrons have various quantum mechanics states in which they can exist inside the atom. And one of those quantum mechanics states is what we call the spin flip, where an electron can basically be what we call spin up or spin down. It's a quantum mechanics state in relation to the electromagnetic fields inside the atoms that cause electrons to be oriented one way or the other way in terms of the angular momentum and in terms of the electrical uh, forces due to the attractive and repulsive forces due to the charges. And so we can then measure that radiation. It turns out that the photons emitted when the spin flip like that occurs, if, it, if the, uh, remember that there's the possibility of having two electrons in a single orbital, and if the two electrons are in the same direction, then they have, uh, in the same direction, then they have a, a uh, what we would call a less stable state than if they're in opposite directions. So the electrons can spin like that, and when they do, they release a certain amount of energy equivalent to a 21 centimeter long wavelength of radiation, which is kind of between radio radiation and microwave radiation. That radiation is able to make it through the dust and nebulas inside galaxies, so it's an easily measured uh, radiation. And what they found was that the larger the galaxy, the more luminous the galaxies are, the more that line is spread wide. So for large galaxies, we have the line that spreads out very thick, and so we have a very wide spreading of that line. And for smaller galaxies that are less luminous, the line is much narrower. Of course, those things are hard to measure, but nevertheless, they realized that there was this linear relationship. And because of that, they were able to then determine the distance of galaxies in an independent fashion. And they utilized that to come up with a more accurate form of the Hubble constant, the Hubble equation here. And when they went through all their calculations, they found that in their estimation, the Hubble constant was somewhere between 80, oh, not 80, uh, between, yes, between 80 to 100 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Now notice, that when Hubble came up with his constant, it was around 500 or 550. With, uh, with uh, Thule and Fisher, we were able to narrow that down to between 80 and 100. Still not correct, because today we know that it's much closer to 73 than it is to those numbers. But it was a nice improvement, an independent way of trying to measure the Hubble constant accurately. Simply, that simple observation saying, wow, look at that. For large galaxies with a lot of luminosity, this line is very much spread out. For small galaxies, it's much more confined to a single, to a narrow area. And when they found that linear relationship, they were able to turn that into a more accurate value for the distance of galaxies. Very nice, but wasn't good enough yet, so we had to come up with even better independent ways.